Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, I want to share with you something that um, I hope will motivate you and inspire you and help you with your long-term vision for what you want out of music, what you want out of being a guitarist. This is uh, a framework that I've slowly developed over time uh, that started with the idea of just prioritizing consistency over everything else. And if, you see, if you've seen any of my other videos, um, I talk about that here and there, that I, I, when in doubt, practice and focus on consistency more importantly than quality, and then focus on quality later. So I have expanded this idea into kind of a framework that we can rely on, um, and I'm finding it amazingly helpful for myself. I'm going to share it with you here. It's called the Practice Priority Pyramid, and this is something that I kind of codified and uh, baked into my beginner course that I'm working on right now, and uh, people are really finding it helpful, so I thought I would share it with you here um, on YouTube and my uh, public lessons as well. So let's dive into it here, and I'll jump to a little diagram that I have of it. This is the Practice Priority Pyramid. And the point of it is to help us when things get tough, help us not get stuck, help us not quit, help us kind of keep things going at a, at least a minimum level, because that is how over time this very slow process of improvement and finding the joy and meaning and fulfillment and skill level and you know everything we want out of music it's so extremely challenging because we do, just don't see it progressing as we're doing it day by day um we can occasionally like okay a couple practice sessions to get something down but the like the bigger changes you know learning something from scratch seeing improvement in an ability that we find very difficult um just doesn't happen quickly it just doesn't happen overnight um it's a long 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 game process so to help us with this um this pra practice priority pyramid um is here for us so as you can see here, if you just looked at it, you could start to put together what's going on here. This bottom is the consistency priority. And this is where we want to focus first. The foundation of our focus for improvement, for practice, for showing up is just consistency. And so therefore we don't care about the quality of it or what we're doing or how we're doing it or anything like that. It could be absolutely silly to show up and feel like we didn't do anything, played a couple notes, grabbed the guitar, sat with the guitar, whatever and the amount of this consistency is fully customizable there's not really an amount anyone should be doing but if we can change our identity into feeling like we are someone that simply has this in our lives we are someone that does this we are someone in our case you can apply this to anything but you're someone that plays guitar you're someone that practices guitar you're someone that is learning guitar you are a guitarist whatever way you want to talk about it we want to feel it in our identity that we are doing that because what we don't want is to, you know, be at a party somewhere, a family event or something, and someone's like, hey, what have you been up to? Or like, oh, I heard you're playing guitar. How's guitar going? And you're like, oh, yeah, guitar's going okay. But really, you haven't practiced for four weeks. But you identify as, oh, you want to be playing. It's kind of an agitating feeling, right? Like, oh, but I haven't been practicing. Whereas if we adopt this consistency, we can just fully own the idea of, Yes, I'm, I'm someone that is working towards this. Even if we're on kind of a placeholder uh, phase, do we get the guitar out? Do we do whatever our minimum, minimum, minimum commitment is? And so that could be really short sessions regularly. That could be two times a week. That could be three times a week. It could be every day, at least a tiny bit. You really get to decide for yourself. And I'll have a little advice on that at the end of this video for kind of devising that something that I find that works really well. So we focus on consistency first. Then after we feel like we're someone that's doing it consistently, and really you can start this kind of in your first, second, third session, because after you show up three times, you're going to be like, well, I'm here. So I'm doing it now. Then we can focus on enjoying it. And this is even before worrying about what are we practicing and is the quality practice and what are we just like, how can I enjoy this time right now? Because if we associate it, if, if we feel like it's a positive experience in our lives, that more than anything is going to get us coming back to it. Like if it just feels kind of warm and fuzzy, you know, or like a yummy meal or like a nice nap or something, you know, these things you can feel like, ah, oh, that was nice. Or like these things in life that just feel cozy or you know, you want to feel like it's not this arduous process, which is a bit contradictory 
because we're going to talk about how it being an arduous process makes us amazing makes it amazing uh, quality and progress. But if we do that before enjoying it and before being consistent, it all falls apart. That's how we quit. That's how months go by and we realize where did my guitar goals go? I got to start over again or New Year's is coming around. I'm going to try again. But if you focus on these things, when in doubt, you go back to consistency only. You let it go back there. When you're cons after you're consistent, you work on enjoying it. You say, what can I do to enjoy this? Can I just enjoy the sound of the open strings? Can I enjoy the sound of the notes? Can I sit and listen to a song and try to figure it out? Whatever you are, wherever you're at with it. Can I, okay, I don't know what to practice. I guess I should practice a scale because people say to practice scales. Well, great. Just choose something. And can you get inside the feeling of enjoying that? Because there is enjoyment to be found in any of it. And if you can tap into that, how does it feel in your body? How's it resonating? How are these tones? How does that interval sound between those two notes? Whatever you're practicing, if we can get into that with just the, the practice of the practice, the practice of enjoying it within the practice, then of course, we're going to have a better time, easier time tapping into real music, tapping into expression, you know, the deeper, deeper value of what we want out of real music. So let's say you kind of figured out, okay, I can, I can enjoy it. By the way, I am very much, uh, uh, this, I have adopted this. If I'm not enjoying it, I make it my homework to find, to like, what's wrong? I got to just, let's say I'm up here working really hard on things and I'm not enjoying it. I go back to like, no, my assignment right now today is like, why am I not feeling this? Like, what do I need to do? Okay, noodle around, try this, try that, try that. And then something will hit me. The lightning will strike. I'm like, oh, there it is. Then the work kind of happens for you on its own. The willpower is less of an aspect of it. Okay, so that's enjoyment. If you have that going, then we can go on to defining our goals. What do we want out of this? Why are we doing it? Who do you, do you want to play for people? Do you want to play live? Do you want to record? Do you want to compose? Do you want to just have this be something that's a private kind of more spiritual oriented, you know, music practice, just having music in your life? Do you want to um, just play for your family on holiday seasons or whatever? You get to decide. It's you. What is your goal? Um, is it just to, for, you know, to have a challenge and, to, and a puzzle? All these things are great. I've talked about this before. I have a little series about finding meaning, fulfillment, and, you know, finding our path. I'll link to that in the description, uh, a little mini series on that kind of stuff. But then you get to define your goals. And after you define your goals, like that's what you want out of it. We don't know how to get there yet. Then you define the path. And the path is, what do I need to actually be practicing to get there? Okay, I want to be a shredding guitarist. And I want to play at, at this local place where I see shredding guitarists. And I want to get up on stage there sometime. Okay, what's going to get you there? Well, those shredding guitarists are playing scales. And they have a certain tone dialed in that you like. And like, okay, what's going to get me there? Okay, I'm going to practice those scales. Okay, I'm going to work on slurs. Okay, I'm going to um, you know, work on my melodic ear training so I can play what I want to hear in my head. There's no wrong thing here. These are the, these are the hardest parts. Consistency and, consistency and enjoyment are way easier to work on. Figuring out what we actually want is much harder. And then uh, defining the path should be kind of a fun puzzle to like, what's going to get me from A to B? What's going to What's going to be the map that gets me there? So you define your own path. I'm going to practice this. And by the way, these things are always, always changing. This is all just a construct. This is all just an artificial way to get us to have the best experience in the journey and to have the best results from that journey and from the experience. It's all just made up to help us. So if it changes day by day, great, that's fine. So let's say your goals change and you're up here, but your goals change. Okay, you got to go, you go back down. Let's say with you're up here working on this and you're just not enjoying it at all. Well, maybe you don't want that goal that you decided on. If you're not enjoying the process towards it, you probably don't want what gets you there really. So you got to rethink what's the end result I want. What's the thing that I want to spend time on a lot of time on to get there. I need to enjoy that as I go. Cause then when you get there, it won't feel like a big deal. You'll just feel like, great. I'm just, I just want to keep going. The milestones shouldn't feel like the only thing we're doing this for. Okay. So obviously you go back to enjoyment. Like what, what am I going to enjoy? Define the goals, define the path. If we have all of that going, we can go up here to what is officially called deliberate practice. I have a couple videos about this, uh, that go into more detail. One of them is a live stream where I do kind of a big 
uh, presentation on a lot of aspects of deliberate practice. I will link to that uh, replay of the live stream um, in this uh, in the description, so you can learn more about deliberate practice. And I have another video uh, where I talk about it as well. That was one of my anniversary videos on the channel. Stuff that I really love. I love this stuff, and it makes all the difference in the world. If you have the foundation of these lower parts in place, you can then be challenged. You can make it hard for yourself. This is where we are out of our comfort zone, where we make it difficult on purpose. We make the most progress when we are here. And this is, of course, where people quit if they don't have the other things in place. So if you jump right away to practicing needs to be hard, well, you're, you're just going to have all these negative, you're going to resist it. You're going to feel like it's a drag to go towards your practice. Whereas if it feels like this treat to go practice and you really have that dialed in after a while and then you start challenging yourself and then you see how challenging yourself being outside of your comfort zone just the right amount makes insane amounts of progress. Like really you, you can catch up on all the stuff you thought, you know, you wish you practiced all this time. You can catch up on it because you can make really good progress if you practice with this type of quality practice and then there's an enjoyment baked in to difficult practice, to deliberate practice, because we see the, we associate it with the, the gains and the progress, right? So up here is the sweet spot, but it absolutely falls apart if we don't have these things uh, going on first. So I hope that is something that helps you reflect on what you want out of music, how to get there, what to do, what to focus on. You know, probably most of us need to just jump back to this pretty often because life is crazy and life is hard and it is hard to fit in our practicing around all of our obligations and our relationship with music. And we just need to prioritize it like you would a date night with your spouse, like you would quality time with your kids, like you would um, making sure you, you go on a walk so you're not just sedentary all the time. Like, okay, just go back to the basics. And in the sweet spots in life, when you can get up to here, you'll rock it forward. And it will be also super fun. So enjoyment doesn't have to be comfortable and easy. Enjoyment can absolutely be like some people who like to work out really hard and they enjoy the hard workout because it feels so good. You get adrenaline, you know, they have an association with the positive effects of it, right? So enjoyment doesn't mean casual and loose and, and relaxed and extra comfortable. It just means enjoyment in whatever way and stimulating. And hopefully that's still happening when we're up here making awesome progress towards our, our visions, towards our goals, to, towards our progress, towards what we want. As we make progress towards things, we might start to doubt what we actually want. So we go back here and think about our goals again and then work our way back up, etc. So here's the framework for all of us. I'm finding it very helpful for myself. I've introduced it now to my beginner course students and they're raving about it as well. So I wanted to share it here with you and hopefully you can adopt it and benefit from it as well. Uh, feel free to share where you're at in your journey, where, which one of these you might need to be focusing on, share in the comments so uh, we can all kind of be inspired by each other. That's it for this lesson. I post a new lesson every week. Hope to see you in the next one. And please, if you need something to practice and you don't know what, grab my free download. That is the printable parent scales PDF. It has all the scales to work on, all the positions of seven different scale types all over the guitar. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. See you in another video soon. Thanks so much. Take care.